Uh, thank you again for joining. Um, today's topic will be the Genesis admin training around reports and dashboards. As I mentioned earlier, just in case anyone who has trickled in since, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the Q&A section below, along with the chat section as well. We will go ahead and address those as we come across them throughout the presentation today. So a uh, quick note for a couple upcoming webinars that we have on August 18th, we've got our nice CX1 API integrations, a, a great uh, topic to tune in for. And then 825, we're also going to touch on Mitel's end of life hardware for 2023. So if you are on the Mitel premise based solution today for your phone system, highly recommend you tuning into that one. A lot of valuable information. So uh, without further ado, we will get started on this training. A um, couple things here on the agenda. We'll touch on who Inflow CX is. Um, kind of where we've been on our roadmap uh, to success, along with how we can help you as well um, uh, with your roadmaps. Um, along with that, as we get into the training, we'll talk about performance dashboards and campaign dashboards as well. We'll also look at the quality evaluator dashboard, a very important one uh, to touch on. We'll, we'll wrap that up with reports along with some reporting best practices. And of course, as we finish up, we'll have an open Q&A. So of course, if anyone sees anything throughout this presentation they have questions on, please feel free to ask. We are more than happy to answer those as we go through it. So who is Inflow CX? Well, great question. Uh, Inflow CX is one of the um, innovative providers for strategic advisory deployment and managed services. So what does that mean? Well, we'll help you guide to the right product that you're looking for. We'll also help you execute when it comes to implementation and building that out. And just as importantly, we'll guide you to the <clears throat> to the correct finish line, where you want to be, where you want to see it, optimize that platform out and see the, the most results you can. Our expertise spans across a couple uh, verticals, but we do a lot with the customer experience, uh, UC and CCAS, along with uh, numerous others, as you can see there. We're vendor neutral. So when we approach all of our technology evaluations and labor strategies, we view it as an even playing field. All vendors are equal in that stage, and we are more than willing to take a look at each and every one of them and properly evaluate if they fit. A little bit about us, we've got 85 employees that span all across the, com uh, the country. We've got them in different fields from sales, uh, technical support, um, along with some consultants as well. Over a thousand customers today from mid-market to enterprise. We've also got a lot of great things when it comes to what we're capable of building out and supporting. So over 500 CCAS installs, um, that's building out similar systems to Genesis and others, along with 300 plus contact center engagements. Um, that's been us really going in, making sure that your system is fully optimized. A couple industry accolades I always love to touch on, <clears throat> excuse me, touch on. We are five nine sales partner of the year and a certified implementation partner. And that goes the same for Genesis. We're also the implementation partner of the year with them. And ICX1 rounding out the group. We are a uh, certified partner and platinum certified implementation partner. So a lot of great uh, things that come with some of the top three industry leaders in that space. And of course you can hear about more from other businesses just like yourself on G2 where we've got plenty of reviews that showcase uh, what Inflow has done for them and how we can positively impact your business. So moving on to the next slide, I always love to touch on this. It's, uh, it's a quick one, but it just showcases the verticals that we work within and it just goes to show that we can work uh, across a multitude of them. So you'll see from tech and retail all the way down to real estate, healthcare and finance, we've got the capabilities to work seamlessly across all of them. Alongside that, we also have the ability to continue to optimize and make your systems as um, performance enhanced, basically, as they can possibly be. And that doesn't just cover one vertical, that covers a multitude of them. So lastly, I want to touch on our tech partners. I think that's an important piece of this conversation that will allow us to segue into what we're talking about today. Um, we work with a multitude of them. So from the UCAS side, you'll see down there Ring Central and Zoom, some of the leaders in the space, along with some of the up and comers like Fuse 8, Nextiva. We've also got teams included in there. We've got the CX ecospace, which is incredibly important to your contact center, a lot of which can come around um, WFM, WEM. We have some Playbox, uh, along with other companies like Quality Analytics, we've got Observe at AI and CallMiner, two great companies we work hand in hand with. AI and Agent Assist, we work with Replicant uh, hand in hand. They are fantastic. They're going to make your agent's experience about as seamless um, and pain-free as possible. And of course, others. We, we, we work in multiple verticals alongside that with compliance, CRM, and BPOs. 
But most importantly, I want to touch on our CCAS. Um, we work heavily within these companies here, Genesis, Five, Nine, and Nice, amongst others in the space, UJet, TalkDesk, and Avaya. Of course, the important one that we want to talk about today is going to be Genesis, and I would love to segue this over to the man of the hour, the individual who will be giving out our presentation on reports and dashboards, Mr. Richard Dixon. So, Richard, by all means, this is uh, this is for you. Good afternoon, everybody. All right, so we're going to go over performance dashboards. There is quite a few prerequisites to be able to use the dashboard. Um, a little bit later on, after we get through a couple slides, I'm actually going to bring it up in our sandbox to kind of show you around so that we can have a little bit better visual of this. So the prerequisites uh, in order to do this, you're going to need analytics, conversation, aggregate, and view, analytics, queue observation view, analytics dashboard configurations edit or analytics dashboard configurations view depending on what you need them to be able to do analytics flow observation view analytics flow aggregate view directory user view routing queue view routing wrap-up code view architect flow outcome view or architect flow view and workforce management, real-time enhanced, uh, real-time adherence view. Uh, to make the the dashboard public, you'll also need to have analytics dashboards configuration publish. So, in order for somebody to be able to make something in here, as far as dashboards go, each individual user, and this is something to remember uh, when going forward, is they own it themselves. So it's going to be individual user base. Uh, there is no admin level to this, where uh, as a administrator, I can't go in to edit somebody else's um, dashboard that they've created, nor can I delete it. Uh, the only way to remove it from the system, if they have been let go and terminated and you delete them, then it can be deleted and it, it may take, a, a, you know, 24 to 48 hours for it to delete from the system. But that's the only way to remove it other than logging into theirs, uh, logging into their account to be able to remove it. So individual uh, permissions are evaluated to determine how much of the public dashboards are able to be seen. So making those adjustments with the different prerequisites there. So depending on the, the uh, permission limitations, they might not be able to open a dashboard or they might not be able to see the notification at the top of the dashboard if they're only seeing partial data. So uh, if they tried to say, hey, I want to view something and they don't have view permissions for that item, they won't be able to do that. So performance dashboards, there's a couple different ones that are available, but using the metrics charts and the widgets, you can select the metrics about the queues, the users, wrap up codes, flows, or flow outcomes that you want to see on your dashboards. Uh, to add a web widget uh, to be able to view online content such as streaming videos or real time chat or news feeds, social media to bring more interactive content to your dashboard. So it can be a little bit more um, you know, unique for each one of those individuals that they want to be able to view it. Uh, using the agent status widget, you can also select the users or the agent statuses in your dashboards. To access this, uh, you'll want to go to performance dashboards and click performance workspace then dashboards and as i was saying before you can only edit the dashboard that you own slash create and only the user that creates this loans uh, the dashboard can make it public or private so i'm gonna drag this other screen over and we'll go from there hopefully everybody can see this so what we're going to do is we're going to go to performance workspace and then we're going to start with a new dashboard and so we'll drop down till we see dashboards here Click on dashboards. This will bring it open. There are some already pre made dashboards in here, but we're going to generate a new one. And how to do that is you click the plus mark here and then you'll name it. So I'm creating a new one, webinar, and this is what we see. There's nothing here, there's nothing available. Well, what we'll need to do is we'll need to click the edit icon over here, the pencil. Once we do, this brings us up into a view and we have three different options here. So we have the small, this long, and down the side. So depending on what we want to add, so if I want to add a metric, I can add text, a chart, or web content. So let's add a metric here. I can add a customizable title filter. So for this, we'll just do test one. So filters, we're going to look for a queue. And I can include inactive or delete users as well if I would like. But for right now, we're just going to do Richard's queue. Configuration, we're going to go for the metric of abandon. I can also add multiple such as answer, outflow, handle, hold. I can add a whole bunch of them to it. And how many do I want? 
Well, we can do the past 30 days, today, yesterday, depends on how big of an interval that you want. A lot of times people are gonna look for the current interval or for today. We have the ability to choose different types of media. So if I only wanna isolate it to just the voice or callback, I can do that. Options, I can show the longest period, show profile picture or split filters. After I'm done, all I need to do is hit save. After that, we'll be able to see the data that's available here. And unfortunately, this isn't going to show much data in this situation because this, this queue hasn't been used uh, since this is our sandbox. We don't have actual data in this. I'll show you another queue here in a little bit. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you is here is how you can build out the size. So you can change the size. So if you'll notice, this metric right here only takes up one block. As you can see here, it only has one dot. I can adjust the size of this to create a much larger grid size for this whole system. And if you notice, it shrunk the size down. If I go down to here, you'll see that it becomes a much larger piece of the puzzle. On the side over here where it says agent statuses, this one I see to be used quite a bit. So I could add multiple agents here. And this is be where you would see kind of the interactions that are going on. So you can see a real time um, of what uh, is available for the individuals. So I'll add a couple agents in here. So just add two agents to it real quick. As far as the metric available, we wanna do something along the lines of available agents. So we wanna see how many people are available. We can add another one with the dropdown of away agents, how many agents are on break, how many agents are busy, communicating agents, idle agents, interacting agents, how many agents are on meal or meetings, not responding, which is gonna be a good one to have. That way I can see who is actually taking calls or who is ignoring them. Off queue agents. And then we'll go with training agents as well. And then I'm gonna display this as a table for the first one here. That way we can see a bit more data. So right now it shows zero available, not responding, two offline, zero in training. And then you can see the list here of the agents if you put table. Now, if I go back and edit that and get rid of display as table, that gets rid of the actual names that are in the list. I find it to be a little bit more useful to have the names in the list. But if you have a, a very large uh, amount of people that you're monitoring, it might not be as advantageous to have that and get rid of the table portion of it and just see how many agents are available to make it a little bit easier and digestible uh, on a view. But you can also increase the size if necessary to make it a little bit more viewable for others in this situation here by increasing the grid size. We can also add charts if we want, metrics and text. So text is pretty easy to add. You can have a customizable filter. You can choose colors that you would like. You can use hex code as well. Hey, Richard, question mm -hmm. for you actually that comes up. Um, someone asks, can you add agent groups to the dashboards or do you have to add each agent individually? To my knowledge, it is each agent individually. Um, I, I'm not aware of being able to add just the group. It is search for user. I haven't seen an option for group yet, but that would be something nice to have um, in order to, to get something along that lines. We would have to open up an ideas ticket and that would be something worthwhile to put forward in there to be able to make it a little bit easier uh, for, for those that have larger organizations and they're grouped. Um, and maybe uh, down the line, they might have something with the, the new works groups that they've added here that might be be something that they might be able to add to this, but currently those aren't available. Sure. Thank you for that. So like, like I put there with the text chat, hello world, and this takes up a little bit larger space. If you notice when we go to the grid, it's got a one dot here. Now, if it's a, it's a larger one and takes up multiple spaces because I've typed out more text and it goes all the way across, you'll see it take up two dots here to be able to fill in the space. So I'll shrink her back down. And you can always add more metrics to it. So if you want different metrics to have, you know, multiple metrics displayed uh, to delete, it's pretty simple. You just click and delete and that will clear it out. So if we go back into edit and we decide, you know what, we really don't want this test. Uh, we can make those adjustments and, and do abandon and get rid of outflow uh, and all those and hit save and that'll update. We can also just delete it if we want to create a new one here. 
same for this table over here. Now, if you notice, I'm going to cancel a lot of this. There's this metric and this metric here and just hello world. If I go to the normal view and get out of the edit mode, you'll see what it looks like real time as opposed to in our edit mode. So you'll notice those disappear. Those aren't going to be shown. The little eyeball here, this will allow it to be made public. That way other people could see it within the organization if we want it. And you also have the star up here for favorite features. Any, any questions about the dashboard at this point? Seems to be that we are good so far. If we do, I will uh, keep you in the loop as they pop up. All right, we're gonna jump back over. Let me move this off the screen here. So campaign dashboards. Uh, so campaign dashboards, you're going to need the following prerequisites. So this is a different type of dashboard. Uh, this is going to be ideally for your campaigns only. So you're going to need the outbound contact list view, outbound DNC list view, outbound campaign search, routing, wrap code search, analytics, conversation aggregate view. So if a user does not have permission to view everything on the dashboard, permission error message will appear in about 10 second polling interval. So if you're constantly getting an error with it, it means you don't have the right permissions to be able to view this. And you'll want to go back through the list and make sure that all of these are enabled. This is kind of how it's going to look for the campaign dashboard. You'll notice that there's a bunch of different sections on here, and we'll go through each one of those a little bit. So monitoring uh, connection rates, abandoned calls, and the progress of each of the running voice campaigns. Uh, the view mode of the calls that have been placed. Uh, this allows you to observe the number of idle agents and how the abandoned rates compare to the target rates. And then the number of calls blocked by the do not call list and other important metrics. So that's the availability of this. So the campaign dashboard is a real time view of all voice campaigns currently running in an active state. The campaign dashboard statistics reflect the current campaign run. If the campaign recycles, the static resets with the exception of the abandoned rate statistics. The abandoned rate statistics are preferred over the life of the campaign. So messaging campaigns are not expected to appear in the dashboard. So if it's just a messaging campaign, it's not going to show up here. But each one, as they're active, will show up in here. So you have the campaign name, dialing mode, the connection rates, the compliance bands, rates, the abandoned rate, uh, the progress of the whole campaign, the idle agents, the effective idle agents, the adjusted call agents, the outstanding uh, calls and scheduled calls, and what division it's located in. To be able to open it, You'll click on performance and then outbound campaigns. This will allow you to view this, provided you already have those filters set up. So you can filter it by a campaign name, dialing mode, and division. Those are the only filter options that you have available. The names of the active campaigns. So when the dashboard loads, it displays the campaigns that are on or stopping. When an administrator turns on a campaign, the system adds it to the dashboard. So it'll be ad hoc in that situation there. Uh, conversely, when the administrator turns off the campaign, it may go into a stopping status before it reaches the off status. So it'll remain on the dashboard until it actually finishes and actually reaches the off mode there. When a campaign completes, the dashboard will display a newly completed alert and allowing that uh, the when the user acknowledges the alert, the system removes the campaign from the dashboard. If the user refreshes the dashboard, the system will automatically remove the campaign if it's been completed. So you either acknowledge it or you hit refresh, and that will clear it from there if it's already finished at that point. Uh, quality evaluator dashboard. So this is a having people doing quality evaluations. So for the prerequisite of there. We need quality evaluation score edit, uh, including the default quality evaluator role. So this is already included in the, in the quality evaluator role, but if you need somebody else to be able to, to look at this as well, you'll need to add this to it. So the quality evaluator dashboard helps you uh, view assigned and completed evaluations, review records of interactions and score interactions using the evaluation forms. To view it, you'll go to performance, overview, and then quality evaluator. So this is kind of what it looks like here. You have a couple different dashboards within that section there. So the interactions needing attention table, which is going to be the top table there with that arrow. Uh, those contain interactions with evaluations assigned to you and have not been completed. So if you are an evaluator and you have this dashboard up, so those are going to show to you what you haven't done yet to what are pending, essentially, in this case. Uh, to access specific evaluations, uh, click the link in their action you want to evaluate and the assigned date column. 
on the bottom there where it says agent activity, from the agent activity table, you can search according to agent's name uh, or according to a set of agents. From this table, you can see how many evaluations have been completed and the average score awarded to each one of the agents when you're uh, viewing your queue. Uh, viewing your queue during the configured date and time range. And at the bottom there, where it says completed interactions, that's going to be your completed interactions. It's going to show the list of everyone that you've done, the average score and calibration as well. All right, we're going to jump into reports. So for reports, the following permissions included in the supervisor role. So they're already included in the supervisor role. However, if you do not have a supervisor role assigned to you, but you want to be able to review reports or make reports, this is where you'll add these different prerequisites. So reporting ACD view, reporting interactions view, reporting quality view, and reporting outbound view. So reports are going to show the historical data about your contact center. Use them with the dashboard views to get an accurate picture of your contact center performance. To start creating a dashboard to configure the report, uh, when you configure the report, you can schedule reports to run uh, when you save the report or schedule them to run at certain times. So you can either do it immediately or have it scheduled for a later time period. If you've already configured a save report, you can run in the report directly from your reports list page. After the report runs, download it to review and share it. And that'll go into your download file section. Only the user who created the report can see the report in Genesis Cloud. So this is just like the dashboard. It is unique to that individual when they create it. So as an admin, I can't go in and look at somebody else's report that they have created. It is only that user. So that I know some people have had some issues with that in the past where they're asking for a report that so-and-so made. Unfortunately, we can't go in there and look at it. It is only the individual uh, that is able to view that or share that out. So when they can figure the reports, you really want to consider the reporting best practices. Each report includes a predefined set of metrics. You must assign parameters for each of the reports uh, as to which user or queues are included and which media types to include and what the date range of the report is on and when to run the report. So you're going to have to set each one of those as you're building out the report. Reporting best practices. This is important to, to kind of think about when we're going forward and developing a report. So schedule reports that run frequently um, or cover large sets of data may may affect the positive or may affect negatively the responsiveness of your entire team. Uh, so if it's taken, you know, trying to get a really large data hit against the system, it might slow stuff down. Uh, so when you create a report, really make sure that you only need to run what you need to run. Don't, you know, getting like a, a whole year of a report might not be advisable. You, you probably want to break that down into smaller sections. In most cases, it won't even run if you run an entire year report because it's just too much data for Genesis to be able to put out. They don't have a defined data range on here. They just have the, the best practices. I've seen it go where we try to run an entire month report uh, for a, a queue, but the queue has taken too many calls and it'll only get a partial uh, when it comes out. So it might even need to go down to a weekly or even a daily report in order to get the data set that you're looking for and have to, to combine them together. There are other reporting options out there besides what's built into Genesis. I recommend talking to the CSM to, to see what other options are available for you in that situation, such as a bright metric or a pure insight or something like that, uh, to see if that might be a better fit for you. If you need to get larger data sets, they might be able to pull and, and pool that a little bit better than just the uh, native reporting that is and Genesis, but uh, I definitely have seen on multiple occasions where we try to run a like a month report and we're not able to pull that entire data set because it's just too much data to pull. Uh, so you, if you're winding up in a situation where it's giving partial or, or doesn't report, you might want to look at reducing the size down to a week, or if you're at a week and it's still too large, go down to a day or two days to find out that nice um, happy medium where you can get the data that you're looking for and the longer uh, amount of uh, space for reporting without going over their uh, the data limit that they have assessed to it. Uh, they haven't given us what that data is. It's, it's just best guess. And then also reporting at different times of the day. So trying to do a pool um, during the middle of the day might not work as well as doing a pool after hours uh, or after hours is for most individuals. 
All right. So Genesis Cloud doesn't have rules for when you can run reports because the factors vary uh, by organization. Report responsiveness is combined uh, and report parameters of the time of day as well as how busy the system is. So that's what I was kind of talking about where, you know, trying to run it um, where you're less likely to get uh, failures in, in these different sections here. So I remember um, my parameters over overly broad so that's where i was talking about doing you know shrinking her down from you know a year down to a month and if a month is too big then bring it down to uh, a day and and work from that so if you're doing a year to date every day that's definitely going to be hammering the system and, and it will not like that at all and definitely bog things down if it'll even put out that kind of report Am I scheduling my reports to run the same time every other user is scheduled to run there? So that's something that I'll have to take uh, some communication between everybody who is running reports in the system to go, hey, if we're all running at the same time per day, that's definitely going to cause some hindrance to the system. So staggering the reports and go, hey, um, you know, Sally has one to two uh, o'clock in the afternoon available to them for running reports and somebody else has three to four and four to five to be able to run those reports. Uh, that way it's not uh, a large hammer to the system when everybody's hitting it at the same exact time. And do my colleagues run the exact same report at the exact same time? So if they're running the same report, that might not be beneficial. It might be beneficial to have one person running the same report and then have it go out and spread out to a couple other people via email as opposed to each one individually running the same exact report. Uh, have we recently checked our scheduled reports to see if there are any that we do not download? So if you're not downloading them, it might be worthwhile to remove those reports so it's not constantly hitting the system. So bring this back over. So we have some reports here. So when you click on reports, you'll have the option to view reports that you've already created here or click and do. When we go into new, we have a bunch of different options here, activity report, and each one of these will give you an example. So right now it's all. And if I click on view example, that'll pull me up to a new screen here. Let me pull up in this PDF real quick, just to kind of give you a visual. So agent activity. So if I was pulling up agent activity, this would allow me to, to be able to search by date here. This looks like it is for about a month here, or a little bit more than that. But it'll give me the log in, log out, the off queue, on queue, interacting, idle, and not responding. So this gives me a weekly total of that, depending on what I need. That is the, the benefit of this. If you're really struggling with figuring out which report is the best for you, looking at each one of the examples will give you a better view of what you're looking for here. But it's as simple as going in, choosing which report you want, clicking select report, putting the custom parameters in here. So the users, what type of format that you want it in? Do you want it in a PDF, XLS, XLSX? Uh, the generation, so you can do the schedule or now, depending on what you want, and the time period, being able to have the custom time period as well as the time zone. And to generate it, all you do is hit save, and then it'll build it out, and then it'll wind up in the inbox over here once it is done and you download it. So more reports, we have a couple more reports in the situation. You have agent metrics reports, so um, the export report. So that's going to give you the number of interactions per day, average talk time, after call work, handle time, and hold transfer data versus the agent metrics report, which is very similarly named. Uh, it has the interactions that they have handled and the handle time, the number of interactions per day, the average talk time, after work time, and handle time. Those are probably the, the ones that I see most run. Then you have the Q metrics daily reports that will give you the interactions offered, answered, and abandoned, as well as performance metrics. For example, the abandoned rate, the service level, the average speed. Um, and then you have talk time, after call work, and handle time, and hold, that, hold in data transfer. Then you have the Q metrics daily report as well. Uh, that number of interactions offered is very similar to the one above, but you can also do the Q metrics report. Doing the summary report will allow you to generate the view that we have up on the screen here. So if you need to have a little bit more visual data with it, you have the ability to do that. Fantastic. We uh, appreciate it, Richard, and, and thank you for diving in on that and, and really giving us quite the presentation, um, along with all the information that we could ever need. So um, what we will do is we will pause. I know we are up against time here, but I wanted to pause and see if anybody had any questions that 
maybe didn't get answered throughout our process, and we can uh, we can answer here now with the remaining minute or so that we have left. So uh, we do have another question here for you, Richard. Can we run work group slash queue dashboard views that show the status of the queues? For example, answer, abandon, flow out, et cetera, with all the agents that are assigned to those queues without manually entering each agent. Essentially queue dashboard, but not agent dashboard. I think we had answered this one earlier. Uh, currently, no, there there isn't the uh, the availability to to do that in the dashboards right now. Uh, as far as the uh, adding just a group of agents, it's individual agents as of right now. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that. And let's see. It does not look like we have many other questions coming in. So what we will go ahead and do. Um, is, is wrap up here. I really appreciate everybody joining in today and thank you all for taking the time to attend the webinar. Best, to, best way to do this is get in touch with us if you have any questions. Of course, we've got our number there, but contact at infocx.com is gonna be one of the best ways to get in touch. We'll route your questions uh, or concerns, comments, whatever it may be. We'll route them to either your CSM or of course our account executive team and make sure that they are addressed in a timely manner. So thank you everybody for attending today's webinar and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars as well. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.